At the Mod Institute, we get a lot of questions about the best practices of relining a denture, the 3D printed denture specifically. And um, people want to know the difference between immediate dentures and permanent dentures, and does the reline process change? Well, first, for printing, we set up typically for an immediate denture with supports on the intaglio surface, the fitting surface of the denture. And um, typically, it depends. We either print horizontal or at a 45 degree angle with the denture, if it's going to be an immediate denture here, in this case, a monolithic Fluxera Smile Ultra Plus denture, printed at this kind of 45 degree angle with the supports on the intaglio. Those supports will just peel right off. Um, if we're printing permanent dentures, we print like this with the um, intaglio surface unsupported, so that they're not going to mess with the fitting surface. The support settings are visible here. Um, and again, they will just peel off, leaving tiny uh, little goosebumps um, that could be easily polished away. If they're left on the intaglio, we keep those for the immediate denture, and we use that for mechanical retention of the reline material. Not that it's necessarily needed, it just sometimes helps, especially with certain con tissue conditioners. For Flexera Smile, um, we kind of cheat a little bit, and we cut the support tip diameter down to 450 microns. Um, these are basically needle-like tips, and if you do this, you have to remember to increase your support density. Um, this is kind of the spacing that I recommend for Flexera Smile Ultra Plus. Whether you're printing teeth or dentures or veneers, it doesn't matter. Um, but again, if you're printing a permanent denture, you do not want those support tips on the intaglio surface. And what you're trying to achieve with these is um, easy peel supports, avoiding the tooth sockets as much as possible so that you don't have to adjust fitting of the teeth into the sockets. I use Voco Ufi Gel SC for my soft reline. It is an incredible product that's very biocompatible. It sticks to the printed resins if you follow the instructions. Um, and we're going to go through this kind of slow here, how you actually um, do these types of things with this particular material. Full disclosure, we are not sponsored by them. We have no financial interest in Voco. Um, we just like their products. The burr that I use here is a burr by Comet. It is a zirconia burr. And the most important thing when you're relining a denture, whether you're doing a permanent reline or you're doing it for an immediate denture, is that you prepare the denture for the reline. And the first thing I like to do is go along my borders. I shorten my borders a little bit because I like the reline material to wrap over <clears throat> and when I reline, I do a functional movement, so I reestablish those borders. And I create a chamfer, about a one millimeter chamfer there on the, on the facial flange. The next thing that I do is with the same burr is I'm going to re <clears throat> relieve the surface of the intaglio of the denture. Um, this is, in this instance, this is a permanent soft reline here for a printed Flexera denture. Um... If you were doing an immediate denture, oftentimes you do not need to reline the intaglio surface because you're already going to get shrinkage of the soft tissues, so you already have that space. But about a millimeter is what you want to achieve, and then clean it with alcohol, and then air dry it. Make sure there's no dust, no particles anywhere on that intaglio surface. Nice, nice and uh, clean surface, and that's super important. And um, after you clean it with the alcohol, you see how it's still shiny here. We're going to go ahead and dry this. I usually just use uh, compressed air. Now, this is the product. It's, um, it's a Voco product. It is a permanent soft reline, but I also use it for like a tissue conditioner because I find it be very friendly to the soft tissues. Mm, it's a silicone-based product, very biocompatible. The first thing is on your dried surface, you need to paint two coats of this adhesive all the way around. Extend just a little bit beyond your chamfer um, margin there on the borders of your denture and apply a thin coat everywhere and then air dry it and then go ahead and apply a second, a second coat of the adhesive. And that's just basically priming that surface to be able to um, make sure that it's clean and it's able to receive the reline, the soft reline material. And again, by roughening up that surface with the with the acrylic burr, um, it's also making it um, to where there's some surface area to bond. The material appears clear. It's like a pink clear. What you're going to do is I first go along my borders and 
I always keep the tip as close as I can to the denture to avoid air bubbles. And I go along my borders really quick and then I uh, try to quickly fill in the rest, always keeping the tip of the reline material pressing down into the denture base material to avoid again air bubbles in the surface of the reline and um, using the tip to kind of spread around the material. This then is going to go to the mouth and you're going to do um, functional reline. So you have the patient closed down and you do your border movements. Um, I do that for about five minutes. I pull it out of the mouth and I let it set up for 10 minutes extra. So again, that's what I do. It's about 15 minutes, five minutes in the mouth of border movements, 10 minutes on the bench. And then I use a blade, in this case, um, an X-Acto knife, but you could use a whatever blade that you have in your office trim off the excess and then it comes if you get the kit it comes with this basically this finishing um, disc that is good at removing any kind of flash that went over the borders of the denture the last step is to paint the sealer part one and part two you mix it together and paint all the areas where the material meets the denture you don't paint you don't paint the inside of the denture at all it's only the seams um, and this kind of melts those borders and fuses it permanently um, to the denture. Now, I find that it is a tenacious bond and it's very durable if done correctly, but if you needed to remove it, you can work a blade underneath it and, and peel it out. If you needed to say, for example, do another reline on an immediate denture rather than putting it over an old reline. So this is kind of what it looks like when it's done. Um, it's, you, could, you see, you could try to peel it off. It's very hard to remove. Um, I usually say to patients, these last about one or two years, and then we, we slide them off and do a fresh one. Um, and patients seem to be okay with that. And of course they have a hard material as well that I think is phenomenal. And we do do a bunch of hard relines and that material, um, I usually tell patients there's about a five year material. So I hope this helps everybody. Um, it's really easy to do these things and, um, there's a bunch of other materials on the market that work as well.